the one today is Thursday, January 26, 2023. This is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. I know it's kind of crazy. All right, what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. Hang on until we get to the charts before you start asking about individual stocks. And a bunch of stuff again tonight. Trading hot shiz coins, intraday trading, brief update. And is it worth it? 10% update, buy a B plus one and IPOs, and a few other things thrown in. There's a disclaimer. Well, where'd it go? My disclaimer flew by. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Or as all the summing up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can have between now. And then, all right, as you know, I've been talking a little bit about intraday trade trading. I started tracking all the stuff I've been doing and reporting back to you guys. And, you know, one thing to think about, too, it's kind of like the Heisenberg quantum theory thing. It's uh, Heisenberg quantum theory. It's like when you try to look at little bitty particles, these subatomic atomic particles, easy for me to say, just the act of you trying to look at them. Oh, you're not seeing the screen? Okay. Just the act of you trying to to look at them uh, changes things. So it's like now I'm kind of, as I'm doing some of this stuff, and it's like, well, if I'm going to report back, would I do this or would I do that? Or maybe I don't want to lose as much money. Or maybe I'll take a little extra risk and make back some money. So that's another thing that's kind of a wrench that got thrown into gears a little bit and something that's kind of in the back of my head. Before I was reporting anything, it was a lot It was a lot more different. And uh, maybe, maybe it'll be better this way. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway... One thing I wanted to point out is if you can figure out when you were going to have a trend day, you can own the world. And if you can get into that cycle where you have like a trend day, a chop day, trend day, chop day, that was kind of my original intention with all this. And then as I started reporting the trades and such, I got to thinking, okay, well, let me just start reporting more and more and uh, we'll see how it goes. It started with me with, with a client one-on-one. -on -one. And we start talking about our trades every day. We've been doing that for quite some time. Anyway, that's how it, it, it came to be. But again, I really wanted to show you what happens on a choppy day and what happens on a trend day. So way back last Friday, the market sold off fairly hard. At least what I was looking at, it, it looked like it was beginning to implode a little bit. But then it came back and hit the mother of all trends. So it was obviously... It, it obviously turned into a really good day. Now, what you're not seeing is around noon after getting stopped out on all my shorts or inverse positions or whatever the case may be, I got to thinking, is this really worth it? I was really uh, stressed out and, and uh, my back, upper back tension, especially my shoulder where I've got a little bit of an injury back there was really acting up. And that's something that I'm going to get into in a few minutes. And I'm like, this is crazy. It's like, you know what? Uh, I don't have to do this. I'm doing this sort of like as a, an SG type of thing. But my real bread and butter is the longer term trend trading. And, and you know, I always have that. And then I came back into the office. Actually, I was sitting at lunch and I got an alarm that the market was breaking out. And I didn't know it was alarm at first. I said, you know what, I'm not going to even bother checking this alert, knowing there was something happening here. And, you know, me, I, of course, I had to look at it. So I'm eating my lunch and I look down and see that the market's breaking out. S&P's at new highs. I said, well, screw it. So I came back here, brought my lunch back in here. And before you know it, I started trading like a madman. And I was I was in the hole pretty bad on Friday. I don't know, I don't remember exactly how much. I'm sure it's it's on my um it's in my trading journal somewhere. But then I just came back and it's like a bad man and, and it made it all worthwhile. I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can do this. Following day, market took off, and then it came all the way back in. That was a loss of 125, which is probably not bad for a day. It looks like they like that. Now the next day was even worse. That's, uh, I think, Tuesday, so you see a loss of 646. That's a day where you probably shouldn't even done anything. These are 30-minute charts, and as I said recently, I switched to a 30-minute, started off with a 5, and now I'm at 30 minutes to keep or help to keep me getting caught up in all the noise. And that's a secret. Again, if you could just catch these trend days, not get faked out if it has a little fake out like I did, you'd own the world. But the problem is you have a lot of chop days in between. And it's not hard to make money, but it's really hard to keep money. You could make money on a route day. In fact, the client I was talking about, whenever the market's in a route, he, he calls me the end of the day. He's like, you cleaned up, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, I did, you know? But 
it's the other stuff that kills you. Now you can see on this day here, it gap lower and sold off a little bit and then rallied nicely. Now 370, this was another one of those days where I was absolutely, I was probably down about five times that amount at least, okay? So had I not got caught up in this morning fluff, this number probably would have been about $2,300 or $2,400. And then it'd be like, you know, it's pretty much worth it if I could just lose somewhere between, let's say, 100 and 600 bucks, and then I could make 2000 or $2,500, then it's all worth it. But on a, this was another one of those days where it's like, you know, why am I doing this to myself, especially at my age? I, I spoke at a conference with a bunch of day traders, and not one person in the room was over 30 years old. It's, uh, it's a highly stressful thing. It, it, it's a high burnout. But what I'm trying to do or attempting to do is, is I don't want to be in and out like the rat going for the cocaine what i want to do is catch a trend day like this and just hold on all day or like yesterday and just try to avoid this morning chop and fluff and then hop on and, and catch a ride so making money is not hard but keeping it is and getting caught up in the the fluff now you can see this really wasn't if you look at the daily chart this looks like the market just had a little bit of a dip and went up but it's actually kind of all over the place. And you can see I got kind of whacked in here. Now, in some cases, I am beginning to add a little leverage to some of these. And so these numbers are gonna get a little, uh, a little crazier probably. But again, if I could have avoided this early morning fake out, then it would have been an okay day because we had a nice trend that developed. So is it worth it? I just threw these in last minute. Stress, mental and physical, as I often say, we're only wired to make so many decisions in our life. And that's that's why inner center city ER doctors and air traffic controllers don't have very long careers. And as I just said, in this room full of young gentlemen, I was the oldest guy by probably, <laughs> I was probably twice the age, probably twice the average age at least of everyone else. Um, I think if you could, my ultimate goal would be to treat it as intraday trend trading and just try to catch a trend and, and not micromanage things so much and not get too caught up in the zigs and zags. And so I'm working on that. I'm trying to figure out the best way for doing that. A while back, I did a piece or two on Holy Grail day hunting. And that was another uh, thing that I was kind of working on is looking for that Holy Grail day where it starts at one end and ends at the other. And every now and then if you can catch one of those, you know, in the world. And as I'm talking tonight, I'm thinking, well, why not just trade when there's a route? And, and that's a question that I keep asking myself too in my morning notes every morning. Because when the market is is in a route and kind of like just going one direction and persisting, that's when you can really make a lot of money. In fact, sometimes you can get into something and and risk a small amount and then as it moves in your favor, you could open up your stop on that. And before you know it, you could take some partial profits. Ideally, as I've shown before, when I do like a walkthrough on an intraday trade, I want to get in as early as possible in the morning and ride it all day long with the trailing stop and initial profit target. And once something moves nicely in my favor and everything is working, there's really nothing else to do. There's no need to be in and out again like the the rat going for the cocaine but there is a mental stress to it and believe it or not there is a physical stress too now here's a biggie and and your motivational people or your people who deal with a lot of motivational people like a tim ferris the tim ferris's of the world they say that when you say yes to something you're actually saying no to something else and like recently or not that recently uh, well both i did some presentations for China and, and they're very demanding. Whenever I do that, a presentation for them, I've got to give up something else. So it's not like I'm saying no to this something else. It's just the fact that I said yes to this one thing. Today, for instance, as I was just kind of talking about right before I went live, I was working on my slides five minutes before the show because I didn't have much time during the day to work on my slides. And and none of the other big, grandiose projects that I'm working on. The only time I have time to work on projects is between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning. And that's when I'm doing most of my writing. So, which some of the writing, it could be considered projects, don't get me wrong. 
but I did because I work out between seven and eight or somewhere there thereabouts. So saying yes to this means I'm saying no to two other things. And some of you guys are probably waiting on emails like when the hell are you gonna answer me? It's probably because I was watching a screen more than I should. So it's something to think about. There is a potential to chase your own tail and create a negative spiral. A negative observation or a negative trade has twice the impact of a positive trade or even a positive observation. So like last Friday, even though it was like $1,300 and change, or almost $1,400, $1,387, I think, but who's counting? It was it was a hard day, and I nearly quit at the middle of the day. <laughs> like, screw this. Why am I doing this? It's stupid. You know? And the other thing, too, is I've gotten caught up in a couple of these morning fake outs. And in doing so, it's kind of like, well, I'm chasing my own tail. I'm chasing the market down, then I'm chasing the market up, then I'm chasing it back down. Now, I'm trying to get better and better by avoiding the fake outs, making sure it truly is moving in that one direction. But it could be. It can be easy to fall in a trap of chasing your own tail and end up in that negative spiral. Now, a couple of weeks ago, one of you guys called it fractal learning, and I did like that. And it's sort of like I was explaining to my wife last night that, or night before, some of the lessons that that kind of reoccur over six weeks or even six months with the longer term trading that I've always done. It's like that stuff is happening intraday over one morning and maybe even less. And uh, it is a, a, a journey into psychology that I never really thought about until I actually did it. I used to always say, you crazy ass day traders. And I meant it kind of as a compliment and kind of as you're crazy. <laughs> a little bit of both, kind of a kind of a half kidding thing. And uh, and now, I, now I, I get it. But there is a lot of psychology and I've been writing tons and tons of the psychology that that has come has come from that uh tape reading has been pretty cool i will have to say it's been kind of interesting get you know, getting a feel for the markets now the thing is when i'm in sync and i'm in flow i'm unstoppable and that's like i said this one client will call me up in the day or he'll just he'll text me when he knows i'm crushing it because the market is tends to go one way and as a trend following more on that's the whole idea is to get on these route days um there's certain times like late late in the day i could do really well for some reason i guess because the market can kind of have like a definitive direction late in the day and um even like the, like the last five minutes there's been days where i got chewed up all day and the last five minutes i make my whole day so i think figuring out the less is more of it is key. You know, maybe I need to look at or go back to some of that holy grail day hunting that I was doing. What's the HV of the market? Is it chopping around? Is there a bigger picture pattern that I need to be that I need to be paying attention to? As I showed, I think two weeks ago, if you look at the the four major ETFs in their inverses that I look at, plus I, I look at a lot of ancillary things too, but if you, look, if you look at those four things, not every day, but many days, it's like one really takes off and one really would a major day and the other ones just kind of chop around. So how do you figure out how to be in that one and maybe just that one? So I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot going on and uh, believe me, I'm getting a lot of data from it, a lot of feedback. All right, any thoughts on that? Brian says, I think you're spot on with that challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, um, and you know, one thing that that I thought about right as it's going live is I do I do miss my life a little bit, you know? It's like I used to, like I've said a million times before, my wife and I usually would have lunch out at least once or twice a week and uh, go for a walk down to the lake and, and um you know, it, 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 I miss that or a bike ride or whatever. So there's a lot going on now. Part of that has gone away just because I'm here so much doing two shows a week, doing the stock charts show, which, by the way, I didn't do this week. And, and that would be, you know, it's like I, I might not I might be losing sight of the bigger picture here. But I didn't do it because I said no to that because I was saying yes to everything else. Started working on my slides, didn't get them done in time. And then there was no show. So. 
is it worth it? I don't know. I mean, if I could catch some route days and uh, sit on my hands in between and get some other stuff done and a little R and R, then maybe yes. If you see that you've missed the ideal strong entry, will you follow the trend and enter at a worse reward to risk ratio? Just bow out of the opportunity. Well, if you are position trading and something takes off without you. If it doesn't take off too far, and let's say you see it the next day, it's only up a point or so, depending on the price of stock, obviously, then by all means, I've gotten in late, in, uh, or in the middle of the day, I've gotten in a little late sometimes on the service stock, just because I have to be in them. And sometimes I've missed something and gotten in the next day, which I'm going to show you, ironically, right now. That's okay. Now, on the, with, the, with the intraday stuff, if something really takes off without you, I will get in late. Like, for instance, today I missed... I want to say whatever one went, whatever one went one way or the other, J dust or something. I was so busy with everything else, but I was willing to get in late on a late day breakout and have a fairly tight stop in. So that's a different type of thing. In the in the shiz coins, you might just buy them when they're going straight up, and so that's a totally different thing. That's when you're in a, a crazy momentum market, and when when there's a route day unfolding in stocks. What I will do is FNGD and FNGU and then the ARC and the SARC. I'll actually go in those and look at like a 30 minute bar. If it's breaking out, I'll take the breakout knowing that I know a lot of times breakouts fail, but if it's beginning to trend and it's a 30 minute bar, sometimes I can get it stop in right below that 30 minute bar or the prior 30 minute bar. And I might only be risking a point, but the, the momentum is so strong before you know it, my stop is bumped up a point, my trailing stop comes up a point, and I'm able to ride the trend all day on the rest of it. So yeah, sometimes it's um it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't when you miss a setup like that. And that's that's one one of the secrets of trading is figuring out how not to make too many decisions. Or let me rephrase that. One of the secrets to trading is reducing the amount of decisions. And that's like saying, okay, well. I have this position trade I'm going to take. You have to remember to take it, okay? So sometimes I've been, I'm looking at the flickering ticks and all of a sudden I forget to take this position trade. This might pay off $20,000 or $40,000 and this might pay off a couple hundred dollars, okay? <laughs> or lose a couple hundred dollars. So it's like, you gotta be careful with that too. So I don't know if I answered the opportunity or not, but the um, question or not, but but yeah, sometimes I, I will chase things depending on like if the market is really going crazy, I'll chase things. Sometimes if it's a position trade and I miss it, it happens. You just have to be, you know, spell with a silent SH. All right, I want to talk a little bit about buy at B plus one. When I uh, originally came up with the buy at B pattern, I think it was in my stock selection course it was if memory serves it was like enter on day six and when i did the ipo course i did a lot of research and i decided that a five-day entry was even better but the day six or beyond entry became buy at b or uh, i'm sorry buy at b plus one so let me show you that real quick and that'll make a little sense so buy it be the the setup is you're going to buy market on close at a five day closing high unless day one sets the high for the week then you want to buy at any close above then buy market or close on any close above day one i'll walk you through that it's not nearly as complex as it sounds so my animation didn't must have not saved over here so that'll make sense in one minute so here's day one, okay? So if this is the only day we have, remember the earliest we'll get an IPO is on day five, on the close. So if stock comes public on Monday, the earliest we can get in that stock would be Friday on the close. <laughs> I get questions all the time and now they're phrased with, I know you don't buy until day five, but what about X, Y, Z? I'm like, no, wait till day five. So day two, day three and we're still below the day one high right now day four takes out the day one high so the day one rule goes away 
And now we have day five. Now, day five is not a new closing high. Where's the new closing high for the week? Or the closing high for the week, I should say. It's right there. So you extend the line forward, and the stock would have to close above that high. And I'm sorry, above that close. And you're going to buy market on close when that happens. So your entry would have been a couple of days ago right there on the close. Now, if you see a stock that's super strong like this, and it's let's say it's 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern time, you got a half an hour left to the market, or maybe 15 minutes left, and this thing just seems to be on a route higher, I like to front run a little bit. I won't wait until the close. So you might get in a little bit early in a situation like that. The only problem is obviously, if the thing has the mother ball reversals, then technically, mm -hmm it wasn't a setup because let's say it comes all the way back in and closes below that five day closing high, then you you would have gotten in early unnecessarily. But anyway, so I looked at this one and it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna take a look at it and see if it does make a new closing high. And in this case, it wasn't much higher, so I ended up getting in. Now, one thing that I found kind of interesting is I was kind of counting my chickens when the, I guess nowadays counting your chickens would be something. Boy, I'm missing my farm fresh eggs. <laughs> but I was counting my chickens. So it's pre-market. This thing was up uh, a little bit. And then I actually missed this spike higher. I, I was looking for 50 cents on this thing. But this thing ran about 25 cents higher. And that's $250 per 1,000 shares. And I have a lot of shares of this. So that would have been a tremendous amount of money I could have possibly made on this as an IPT or just let's say your IPT, you're looking for a half a point and all of a sudden you get like 25 cents in one day. That's something you need to kind of think about. Now, it's a little easier to think about if you take it like, like uh, three or four points on the stock, for instance. Let's say you got an IPT of four points. And day one, you're like three points in and you're just all excited. This thing's going to the moon. Usually when you feel good about something, it's usually a good time to, to lighten up for what it's worth. So in a case like this, 25 cent move percentage wise is pretty damn big. And I think I might've been offered a gift horse on this one and didn't take it. Now I didn't look at the intraday chart to see how long it was actually at that high price so maybe it just kind of had a quick spike and came right back in but anyway it's possible gift, gift horse situation now as one of you guys pointed out this uh trading game is kind of tricky right so i just told you to buy an ipo on day five if you take a look at stock charts apparently this stock already existed and they just went public with a listing that ended up on the NASDAQ and in Telechart, it was showing it as a brand new IPO. And that's where between, I use Telechart and Finvis for my IPO scans. And by the way, uh, based on my asking them, stock charts actually showed me that you could do, and they actually named it IPOs too. You could do uh, an IPO scan on stockcharts.com. And what's it, it's looking for, um, it's a way to trick their system, but it's actually listed as IPOs now. So the, the internals on, they, they showed me the workaround and then they they named it IPOs and uh, you could actually get IPOs off stock charts. And I don't have that link available, but I could uh, ask them again, or, or if you dig around their homepage, you should be able to find it or search for IPOs. Anyway, so this stock existed. So here comes the tricky part. It's kind of like, is it really an IPO? Because this thing was like a pink chic stock, a stock or something. It didn't came came public or an IPO or Nasdaq or whatever. So it's a little tricky, and it's always something to worry about, I guess. So I guess maybe the the thinking is if you do take something as a pure IPO pattern, maybe check to see if it's check a second data feed to see if it already exists, or maybe check your 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 trade whatever your platform you're trading off of, since they should provide right, provide you with charts. All right, I want to do a brief 10% TFM system update. And then we'll talk about the um, the shiz coins. So 
the thing is, as I've been saying for several weeks here, when I designed the system, I didn't realize how much lag was built in, but lag is actually okay. And in this case, now I do have other systems which have less lag, and I, this is the weekly chart too. I do have systems which look at the, the daily charts, okay? So I'll get signals on those before I'll get signals on something like this. Usually, except in the pandemic, this thing actually triggered before the daily bow ties and other daily daily signals triggered. So a sharp drop will cause a trigger in this TFM 10% system. And by the way, the sell is just a drop below the buy line, which is 10% away. You see this 90 over here, that's 90% of close, 50 weeks. Okay, it's a weekly chart, weekly chart. So that close is right there. This is 10% away. You can see the buy line rises with price. So right here, this is 10% away from that high. Okay, and notice that the buy line doesn't go up until we make new highs. So right there, we start making new highs. So the buy line jumps up. But what's interesting is we've been in this bear market for so long, we're starting to drop. So you can see the moving average obviously has been working to catch up. This is a 50 simple. And we actually closed above the 50 week simple today, which is interesting. But now that the buy line is dropping down here, it's almost to the 50 week moving average. And if you count back 50 bars, you can see which what the highest closing high would be for that period and where the 10% would be. Now in the pandemic, as I've shown quite a few times before, it didn't catch up to price because you had to spike down, spike back up, and it was still using that 50 week high, which didn't drop. In 2003, 2004, where the bear market just bottomed out forever, it began to catch up with price. And it looks like we're in a situation like that now. So we've been in this bear market for over a year. Now, the, the buy has to be a close above the 50 week moving average. And also, you have to have Landry light above the 50 week moving average for two weeks. And right here, you have to squint your eyes. If I'd have made this moving average thin, and this is why I didn't see it. I'm just realizing why I didn't see it when this happened in real time. Had I made this moving average thin, I like a big fat moving average. This is as fat you, as you can get them in stock charts. I like them even fatter. Uh, anyway, I didn't notice that there was Landry light below this low. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny little gap between the low and the moving average. And you can see right here, it was above the, even on this day here, was above the buy line. So technically, that was a buy signal. And I didn't notice that it was. No, this is not this is not volume back here. Okay, Brian says that 220, 2022 volume is notable. No, this is percent from closing high, okay? So if you're making a new closing high like right here, you are at a closing high. So we had we had one, two, three weeks of new closing high. So you see right here? So this is going to be zero. Now, when you get into a bear market, you can see right here, we were about 25%. This is not the lows, this is the close, okay? So you'll notice that this close here might be slightly above or not much above the other one but you can see right here right around 25 percent. so that's from here down to here okay and anything above that 10 percent you would be losing money had you stayed with the market okay so if you exit when you drop below the buy line and the 50-week moving average 50-week moving average is a, is a whipsaw filter as I say, a nausea, you got to be careful with whipsaw filters because if you put too many in, you end up curve fitting your system to the historical data. And I actually had someone, and I once said his name, I shouldn't say his name, <laughs> but he designed a lot of systems. And one day I said, you know, your biggest drawdown is always in front of you. And he really got mad at me. And I'd be willing to bet that he got his biggest drawdown by now because that was 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm not being shot on Friday. I'm just, you know, experience is the best teacher. Anyway, so this is the percent away from the 50-week closing high, okay? Now, this is going to start dropping down 
okay? Because we're no longer looking at this closing high. And of course, the market has rallied. So we're getting, a, the performance is beginning to improve. As a general statement, as long as you're below this line down here in this histogram, you wanna be long the market. Look at this, look at that, okay? Like Tiny Elvis coming out here. Look at that trend, it's huge, okay? And uh, on the flip side, as long as you're above this line, you want to be short the market or are out of its way. Now, just real quick, and I know I say this every week, but you got to remember the designer's intent with this system was to get you out of the market before anything bad happened. And my feeling was if a market is going to drop 50%, it's going to drop 10% first. And 10% is a good round number to get out for something like the S&P 500. At other markets, that number might be a little bit bigger. You might have to withstand a bigger drawdown. And that just comes with, with volatility is the price you pay for performance, I think is what some people argue, but they're right in some ways. So you look back here, you had the first bar of 50 week Landry light. And notice if you'd have waited for that downside Landry light on a 50 week chart, it would have gotten you out fairly late. Obviously, you'd have missed some of this slide, a significant part of this slide, but you'd have been out of the market fairly late during that pandemic. So just from, I guess, exiting on this close down to these lows, but you didn't know that until this market had, had finished closing. So you don't want to sit around and wait forever with something like Landry like now. If you're using a maybe a 30 EMA on a daily chart, then by all means, you can pay attention to something like Langelite to help get you out of the market. But you can see here, this histogram is just measuring the days the market is above the, the lows are above the 50 week moving average or the highs are below. So you can see if you squint your eyes, you can see this little baseline. I've got it set at 10. 10 is a good round number for a trend, okay? Now, there's other things you would use, obviously eyeballing the stock or other market and drawing arrows and, and things of that nature. But as a general statement, after 10 bars of Landry Light, whether it's weekly or daily or 30 minute, you have a trend possibly developing, okay? And you see this case, it carried for a long time after those 10 bars of Landry Light. I'll show you a little system again that just uses two bars of Landry Light. Now, the reason I'm focusing on Landry Light is you do need two lows above the moving average to get long. And if you look right there, if you squint your eyes way down here, we had two bars of Landry Light. So if I'd have been looking at this indicator down here, I would have seen this as a signal to get in. That signal obviously would have been a whipsaw. So a lot of lag, at least on a weekly chart with a 50 week moving average in Landry Light. But as I just said, it can help to keep you in the right side of the market. And it's kind of interesting. And the 30 week EMA works really well too. In fact, I like it better than the 50 simple. But since the 50 simple is part of the TFM 10%, I thought I would show you it. But I've been doing a lot of presentations for stock charts where I'm showing how you have the Landry light to the downside. So you only had two little kisses of the 50 week for a long, for much of the 2023 bear market. And now based on today's close, we have closed above that 50 week moving average. Are there any questions of Landry light, TFM 10% system or anything else? I asked for um, um, suggestions for tonight's show, but I asked for it very late in the day. And I saw the post, but my screen had had scrolled up. And um, Brian asked, can you actually make a living on a 100K account with your methodology or do you need a larger amount? And some of the stuff I wrote here, I wrote a lot of writing. Um, I wrote a lot of writing. I've, I've written a lot. I just can't find it all uh, on um, what to expect as a trend follower. A lot of people say, what exactly should I expect with your trading service? And I tell them, I don't know, because I don't know what the markets are going to do. If we get into a situation like 1999, expect to make 500%, <laughs> you know, but we're not in that kind of market, okay? And I think the, the better answer to all this is what can I expect as a trend follower? And what, what I've done 
with a hybrid approach to money management and hopefully good stock picking and not following a mechanical system mechanically, but really good stock picking and being willing to sit on my hands a lot and wait for these good stocks to come along, I'm able to, to beat trend following in general. But trend following in general, and I have a lot of characteristics of that in my methodology because it's a trend following methodology. And by the way, the only way to ever make money in a market is to capture a trend. So even contra trend traders, they must catch a trend if you think about it. That, that'll kind of warp your mind a little bit. But the bottom line is the only way to make money is to capture trends. So why not be a trend follower all the time is the way I feel about it. So I didn't realize he was giving me fodder for the week of charge. So I just thought uh, I would bang out a, an answer there and, and just kind of read his digest on this is let's say you're a good money manager and you're making, you can make about 20% a year, year in and year out with, with fairly small drawdowns. You could have all you would have all the money in the world to manage. And I just watched the Netflix, I think it was Netflix thing about uh, Madoff. Really fascinating. I'd recommend you watch it. He it was a Ponzi scheme where he would take money in and show false returns and he would pay dividends on that. And as long as he kept getting more and more money in, everything worked out until he stopped getting as much money in and people started getting nervous and withdrawing money. And then the whole thing cratered. But it was interesting that his returns were only like about 10% a year. It's not like he was promising hundred percent returns or whatever, but he never had a drawdown. <laughs> and that's how he got caught. And uh, it's a, it's a really good, it's a really good story. And uh, this one guy just was so aggravated because he knew he was a fraud and uh, the SEC turned turned a blind eye to him, but uh, see the see the, watch the story is pretty good. But anyway, he had I forget how many billion actually came in, but it was a lot. It was like thirty or forty billion actually came in, or something along those lines. It was a lot of billions of dollars that flowed into him because he appeared to have like a money making machine. It didn't make a lot of money though. That's what's kind of interesting. And they say this is a documentary. I don't want to ruin the whole thing, but. A lot of people thought that there were greedy bastards going in because they were they were getting 50% returns or something, but actually he was only making at best maybe a percent a month. So anyway, so if you look at trend following, you're not gonna you're not gonna create an income from trend following. What you'll do is you'll create capital gains and you'll have to grind it out, grind it out, grind it out. And part of the the piece I was kind of alluding to is what should you expect? Expect to go six to eight months without making a lot of money. And that's going to be hard when the rent is due and when eggs are $20 a carton and all these other things are coming at you. So you need to kind of treat the trend following as more of a capital gains type of, of thing where you might have to wait six to eight months and occasionally longer. And then occasionally you you knock it out of the park. And I just grabbed a couple of big winners. Believe me, if I had more of these, you might not ever see my fat ass again, but uh, that's going back a couple of years, CPE, and we just closed out not that long ago, the ARLP. And this is based on a hypothetical 100K account, but I do take these actual trades and I'll show these actual trades in a lot of these weekend charts. And sometimes I'll do them across multiple accounts. So I, I make sure I do them kind of like in a model account so I can show you that, okay, if I say buy 600 shares, here's 600 shares or 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares, I could show you those couple of thousand shares and I could show you the $1,900 in dividends, things like that. But you could see like a couple of years ago, we had the CPEs, 500% gain. And we sat in this one for a long time, but it's still, it's a decent gain. So it's 22,000, 23,000 round numbers, maybe a little bit better on 100K. That was per 100K. So you would make $23,000. I think this one was less than a year. And I think this one actually went much, much longer than that. So you had to wait a long time. And one thing I was thinking about as I was showering right before this presentation, <laughs> Dave, the things you think about in the shower have changed. One thing I was thinking about is I closed out of this one for about 20K. And, and like I said, I, I did do it in more than one account. But let's say you're sitting, you're sitting there and you're up about 10K 
in something like this and you got a lot of bills to pay all right so you're like i can take that 10k or maybe take half of that or whatever and pay those bills off because i really need to pay those bills or maybe i just need to shut down the whole position because i need that money and then watch this thing double without you so there's a lot of problems if you're going to take the money out of your trend following account and use it for your day-to-day -day income and all. The, the ideal thing would be to be patient and to be strong hands, so to speak, where you don't have to pull that money and then you get that windfall, okay? You get that 20K windfall per 100K take half of it, leave half of your trading account so your trading account still grows, and then take 10 grand and go out and buy some eggs and whatever else. <laughs> so anyway, but I'll flesh those things out. Uh, as soon as I find all the writings on what to expect as a trend follower, I'll uh, I'll get that to you. And, and, and I, I know exactly where they are. They're in here. <laughs> they're, they're in my digital tablet. And I've actually I started working on two books. One book became so massive. I figured I'm trying to figure out a way to squish it down to a smaller book. And I think it's gonna be pretty good if I say so myself. All right, let's shift gears, let's talk about crypto a little bit. As we've say lately, crypto's really been heating up. If you guys want to uh, ask about some individual crypto, feel free to do so now. You can also ask about individual stocks if you want me to take a look at those when we get to the charts. Now, this is one thing I've been doing is when a market gets really hot, and this is kind of um, reminiscent of 1999, and also, what year was that where the shit coins were going crazy before the pandemic? It wasn't, it was maybe 20, I forget when, but it was wonderful. And, and I think we're in another one of those periods right now. And Sometimes you could just buy things that are going up. And I'll show you, we'll take a look at like the 220 EMA and stuff like that. But if it's liquid enough, you could buy these things when they're going up. And what I've been doing is just setting an IPT for 20% higher and putting a limit order there and then trailing a the stop on the remainder for a free roll. And I'll show you what I'm free rolling on and just one second. So again, the IPT is just 20% higher. And yeah, this thing could top out as soon as I get in, and it actually happened to me on one today, but the chances of it going at least 20% are pretty good. And then I, I get a free roll out of it and then try to hold on as long as I can. So if you, sort by the percent change and i'm going to do that in a few minutes it's not going to be as impressive um tonight because the market rolls over at a certain time and i need to find out anybody now i asked this last week and nobody answered but if you know the answer leave it in the comments if you watch on youtube anyone know how to change the date the date switch over so i'm seeing like the the, the change from let's say midnight on but anyway, sometimes you could just sort these things and provided they're liquid enough, okay, and near the top of the candle, you could just go in and buy them as they're going straight up. And that's a question I think Brian was asking earlier. You know, in some of these, I'm like, damn, they've already gone 40%. I missed it. It's like, you know what? Maybe it'll go another 20% from here and it might be worth a shot. So you want to look to buy the strongest with the caveat of it's liquid, it's active. And then you might want to look at some of the other things you would look at with, with stocks, such as overhead supply and, and does it trade cleanly and et cetera, et cetera. And I'll flesh out a little bit of that uh, tonight when we get to the um, live charts. Now, the TFM stuff works too. So sometimes you get a little pullback. and you could actually just enter on a pullback when it begins to rally out of the pullback. So that's another thing to do. You could actually put in an, uh, an order, a stop entry order in a case like that, and then put in your IPT. Now, I haven't been putting in hard stops, 
but I do put in an IPT. Now I'm trying to remember which one it was, but there was one, there's been a couple lately that have, um, that have been taken off in the mornings. And then like right before I go to the gym, I've been putting them on. And then when I get back from the gym, I've been pleasantly surprised and the IPT has has been hit. So that's been kind of that's been kind of a fun thing to do. Now keep in mind, this is kind of nickel and dime stuff, but it can add up. I mean, it's been probably more impressive, <laughs> certainly this week, way more impressive than all that uh, stupid day trading I've been doing. But anyway, let me just show you. So we sort by percent change, and again, they're not going to be. Well, there they are, they're okay. And then you wanna to look to buy the strongest, okay? So this one right now, I mean, this is a little crazy. This one might be too crazy, but this is kind of the idea and too crazy by, um, I don't know how liquid it is. What's that, H, O, let me just, S and Gs, let's just see something. So 0 0.004. So sometimes, as long as they're like the top of the candle like this, you can just go in and and buy them. H I O D. Let's just see what that is. Okay. All right. So let's. Okay. So I just bought a little bit of this. So. So we'll see what happens. So let me just mark the chart where it is. And you could just take, like I said, 20%. Let's see. And you get you get shitty fills in these things, by the way. So let's just see where it let's see what we got where they filled me. Oops. It's funny when I do these shows, everything looks better. <laughs> The one I bought last week went up like 100% though. Okay, 0 0.00412. So I'm gonna take a, a, a horizontal ray, 0 0.0041.00. And right about there, close enough. And then what I would do is I take my calculator, 0 0.04. One two and multiply times one point two, and that's forty nine. Okay, so this thing has to go right there for me to get paid. So I'll take another one of these guys here and put it at forty nine, so I'll know. And I'll show you once once you see a couple of these. I make this green because that's green for money. And then I'm going to take a put a limit order in at that price. So zero point zero zero four nine five will be fine 50 percent. all right so now i have an order in there now this might not have been the best example it might be a little thin see it's already coming back in on me okay but let's just see what happens okay now that one see this one has long tails okay when they have long tails like this they're probably liquid although i did watch one go up 100 percent in front of me before i get an order in and then again you know this could be a, this could be another one of those time sucks and it, it has been lately that's another reason I've been saying yes to this, which means saying no to something else, right? Now, a couple of these I'm going through, you can see their long tails are kind of choppy in here, so I'd avoid those. You want the ones that are going to trade a little bit more cleanly, and I'll show you the ones that I'm long in just one second. And sometimes the newer ones can work out nicely, kind of like IPO. See, look, long tails, long tails everywhere. So it's not super exciting right now. The market has kind of cooled off a little bit. Now there's some there's some downsides to doing this too, is because you're hyperactive, and it's like I actually went in and tried to delete all my old drawings, or as I see them, I delete them because you don't want to to get bummed out on the moves that you've missed in these things. But in some cases, you can go in, if you catch them early enough, and I thought I had slides on that. If you catch them early enough, you could, 
you can go in and, and do something like the 220 EMA or 230 EMA system. So here's one I'm long. And I don't know why my green is way up here, but uh, yeah, okay. So it hit the initial profit target and I'm free rolling on it, okay? And that one, I think when I woke up was like up 50% from past the profit target. That's when I was long. So you can't, you kind of get the idea. You want to work to get into the strongest ones of these and try to hang on for dear life. But of course, if things turn sour, you have to get out. So let me show you my portfolio. So this one's free rolling. Like I said, this was the IPT. It's come back in a little bit, but so far so good on that one. Okay. The IPT was right here. So again, I'm buying into these brand new highs and I'm only looking for 20%. I know only 20%, but sometimes you get that within minutes. Okay. Now, don't bet the form. I mean, I trusted exchange about as far as I could throw it. I told somebody how much money I hit on this one exchange from the Seychelles, and it's not that much money. I'm like, you have that much money in there? I'm like, yeah, it's really not that much. And so never put more than you're willing to lose should it go and solve it. So one thing I have been doing too is I've become, I've become impatient because they're like a bus coming along. So this SOL has hit the IPT. It hasn't done anything wrong just yet, okay? And technically my stop should be at break even right down here, but I'll probably end up bailing on this early. Now the downside is I'm coming tomorrow and this SOL is up 50%, then I'm SOL, right? NACA, I think we just talked about that one. You can see nice move higher. So see, that's 30, that's a 30% 30 bar right there. There you go, right there. Last time I talked about them this enthusiastically, <laughs> I uh, I showed the little Judas Judas goat dressed in a business suit. It's like, I don't want to be the Judas goat to lead you guys into a lot of trouble. So buyer beware there. That's why we call them shiz coins, right? Or shit coins. APT is another one you can see. I'm above the IPT on this one. Start to come back in a little bit. Uh, what was the one last week that I bought during, or no, I bought it after the show. Was LCX or something? No, I forget what it was. And it was, it really took off, but then it imploded. It came right back in. This is the one I just bought. You can see, look, I'm already down uh, substantial in this. Okay, and this is a little bit thinner one. And you know, in hindsight, look at the look at the long tails in here. Okay, so maybe this was a, a little crazy thing. I might have get a little too, might have gotten a little too full of myself. But we'll see what happens. I'll close it out by the end of the show. This one, I may have closed this one out. This one did not hit the IPT. If it's green, it hit the IPT. VRA, I've been in and out of this one several times. And see, that's the downside is I've gotten in and out a couple times. And then now I'm back in again, whereas if I had just stuck with the position, it would have done okay. Yeah, we'll get to that, um, Jeff. So here's one FTM hasn't paid off yet. I got into it earlier today and so far it's coming back in. Now I don't give these things a whole lot of time. If I see something I like better than this, I'll flip out. It's kind of this RS rolling, I'll roll into something stronger. Here's another new position that hasn't worked out just yet. So I'll probably keep it on a pretty short leash. Bitcoin itself has been doing really well. I had a slide or two with the, with the 230 EMA. 230 EMA, two lows above. The exponential moving average look to buy plus a little wiggle room above those two highs. So technically the entry would have been way back here on Bitcoin. This was a signal, but it didn't trigger. You will occasionally get a whipsaw. This would have been a whipsaw back here, although you might have got a little bit out of it. You may have gotten an initial profit target before it came back in. It doesn't always work, obviously, but when when the markets really heat up, and that's what I'm starting to pay attention to now is when it, when I'm going through these and they're not up 40 and 50% or whatever that stupid one I just bought was, when that cools off a little bit, or if they've gone so far it's too late, I'll go in and start looking at something that maybe I can get in a little bit earlier with that 230 EMA breakout. And that 230 EMA breakout, it's a pretty cool little system when markets are breaking out. As you probably know, more often than not, breakouts fail. So be prepared for a lot of uh, failures if you're doing that. Okay, 
Jeff says, remember the reverse TFM we were talking about a few months ago, buy line is 10% from the 50-week lows. Okay, it has been above the buy line for several weeks now and will probably close above the SMA this week. Uh, yeah, that makes, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, he was taking, he's buying markets 10% off lows as opposed to getting out of markets 10% off highs. Um, that's going to get you in a lot earlier, but that's a complete, that's a, like a complete different system. Okay. And, and what's your, what is your exit with that system, Jeff? That's the only thing you got to, you've got to fully, you, if you're going to have a system that gets you in, you got to have to have a way to get you out, unless that's just the money management that's going to get you out. So where would your stop be? So that's the question there. My goal, again, with the TFM system was to get you out of trouble. And it only beats buy and hold when bad things happen, okay? So if we get into a, a longer-term bull market that stays longer-term for a long, long time, then it 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 won't beat buy and hold, obviously, because the market just goes up. However, every now and then the market loses 50% of its value, then it really begins to pay off because you lose 10%, market loses 50%, and then if it's a longer-term bear market, you're getting in much, much lower after sitting in cash and not losing all that cash. And that's when it really starts to beat the, the buy and hold. And if you just look at a period of five or 10 years where the market goes straight up, then buy and hold would obviously work better. But when you start adding in bear markets, and I, I went all the way back into the 30s, where you have a 90% drawdown on the, on the S&P 500. And Obviously, it got you out when you were down 10% or thereabouts, so you missed the, the next 80% lower. I know the math is a little wonky on that. It's probably a, the next 90% lower. Just like in, um, what was it, in 2000, the NASDAQ lost half of its value, and then it lost half of its value again. So I've seen people, and I, I'd never call anybody out, but I was at a presentation once, and somebody was saying that whenever a market's down 50%, start selling puts. I think Buffett did that. Buffett sold a bunch of puts. You know, Mr. Value Guy, you know, and maybe that's what you do as a value player, but he sold a bunch of puts. And, you know, had that market gone down another 50% like the NASDAQ did, he would have been a hurt and pop. So, um, you know, Mr. Buy and hold a stock, you know, Coca-Cola or whatever. He's also doing a lot of derivative trading too, which is uh, anyway. Don't get me started. I'm, <laughs> why is why is he the sacred cow? Like you know, it's like he loses fifty percent of his money. Nobody says anything. You know, the fund will drop fifty percent every now and then, and nobody says anything. But if a hedge fund were to lose that, then they would be out of business. I, I, I don't know. I digress. Okay, let's shift gears. Let's hop into stocks. You guys want to start talking about some individual stocks? Let me know. And what I'll do is I will do a brief market update, and then we'll uh, we'll take a look at your stock picks. So let's take a look at let's take a look at the overall market. And you know, let's get some. Um, let's see. Let's get the. I'm multi-processing, which I know is a bad idea. Let's put some, uh, what I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to add in the, where am I? I'll just do it by hand then, let's see. So let's go to, let's just add in the moving averages. Oh, there they are, bam. <laughs> it works so well in rehearsal. All right, S&P 500. Decent day today, obviously. It, uh, it it looked like it was gonna be the mother of all opening gap reversals. It certainly tricked me. Let's take a look at the spiders. You can see gap open, sold off hard, but then turn around and went straight back up. You can see on the P's that the 50 is coming into the 200 day moving average. And we could get a golden cross soon. Now, one thing, that I've said quite a bit. It's the it's the magnitude. This one was a little late, but it's the magnitude of what happens after the death cross or the golden cross that's important. So you had the death cross over here, and you can see the market did sell off fairly hard. So 
treat this like any other trend signal. This is a slower trend, trend signal, but it's the magnitude of what happens and not the, the signals in and of themselves. And there's really not a huge edge. I think um, Rob Hanna tested it. It might be a 4% edge, if that much, by buying and selling the, the crossings, which I recommend you don't do. However, if you get a signal like this or Landry Light or any other signal or bow tie, pay attention to the magnitude of what happens afterwards. Let's take a look at NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, as you can see, we're, we have Landry Light above the 50. We hadn't quite gotten through that 200-day moving average just yet. NASDAQ's been trying to bottom out for a while, as have the P's. Russell 2000 has really been trying to bottom out. You could argue that this is a complex head and shoulders, multiple bottoms and multiple heads, or multiple heads and multiple shoulders, however you want to look at it. I just look at it as like, okay, it's stopped going down and now it's starting to go up a little bit. We closed right at these multi-month highs, so that's a good thing. That puts us right above this little range in here. Let's not start kissing each other just yet, but it's certainly starting to improve. For those keeping score, we do have a possible death cross, or no, that'd be a golden cross in the works there. Energies finally broke out. I was a little concerned because they lost some steam in here, and they were sitting below these multiple tops. So a little concerned about that, but now we've broken out to brand new highs, so that's a good thing. Take a look at metals and mining. Metals and mining kind of going straight up in here. No meaningful correction just yet. So they're not letting us on, which is a bummer. It's like uh, you, you kind of hate when you get a finally get a trend, but they're not letting you in. But on pullbacks, we should see a plethora of setups. A TKO would be a godsend here, like a sharp, sharp, sharp sell-off where everybody just gets scared, scares the bejesus out of everybody. And then we look to get in above that high of that knockout bar. You could probably Google TKO and Dave Landry and get the... Get everything you need. Take a look at banking. <laughs> Not an exciting area, but certainly improving. And the more areas that are improving and looking better, the better for the market, obviously. Financials looking pretty good. You got your golden cross there for those keeping score. Drives have lost some steam as of late, but they sort of let us out. Now, one thing to remember, and energies have kind of been a little bit like this too, so we're going to have to be careful. Sometimes the prior leader becomes a laggard and new leaders emerge when you're coming out of a bear market. Not that I won't continue to trade the energies. In fact, I'm looking for pullbacks there and the metals and mining, but maybe the some of these other areas that are a little bit earlier in their emerging, such as the semiconductors, might offer better opportunities, okay? So as you can see, semiconductors, golden cross there, Nice Landry light above the 200, nice Landry light above the 50 simple moving average, closing at multi month highs today. Still is a long ways to go, obviously, to get the new highs, but certainly improving in here. Let's take a look. The dollar, the dollar's been in a lot of trouble. We started looking at the bow tie in the dollar a long, long time ago. And let me show you that. So now you've got a, a death cross in the dollar. But if we take a look at the bow ties, okay. They look a little funky. Let's make sure we got the right ones. Yeah, that's the right ones. But you can see the dollar did roll over. It might be something else I'm thinking about with the bow tie. But you did get proper order to the downside. Uptrend proper order, 10 greater than 20, 20 greater than 30. 20 and 30 are exponential, as you can see up here. So as a general statement, it's a pretty good trend signal. If the 10 is greater than 20, 20 is greater than the 30, okay? It usually means you're in an uptrend or it helps to signify you're in an uptrend. Also, draw your arrows. Also, eyeball the chart, okay? And you can see that they did roll over to the downside in here. Okay, let's take a look at bonds and then uh, any individual stocks you guys want to talk about. I know on Facebook, we talk about stocks all day. If there's anything else you want to talk about, uh, let me know. I might have a little surprise for you here <laughs> watching the screen in the background. She has a problem with shit coins, too. It's kind of like... Uh, been watching a show on black holes, you know? So I'll put it on and my wife falls asleep. And then I come in here, I gotta be quiet because she can hear through the walls. I come in here and I trade shit coins. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. It's actually a pretty good show. It, it, it ends with like a whimper though. So don't, uh, I, I would suggest you not waste your time. The only reason I like watching it is I enjoyed like these guys getting together like on an academic level. I'm kind of a nerd. I, I'd be, I think it'd be a blast to be part of a, a group of nerds like that. Like. It, like we need to get a group of nerds together and, and, and do like a trading thing like they did with the black hole. 
anyway, I have uh, digressed. All right, any individual stocks? OSG, OSG. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, volume is a little thin. Not too bad though, you've got ample volume. Uh, it kind of can be funky. Now, I did a lot of testing, uh, trend following type of testing, trend following type of mechanical testing, and I had the hardest time making any systems work in shipping doesn't mean they're they're not worth trading but the shippers can be really really choppy as you can see here kind of all over the place let's uh clean this chart up Ooh, look at that funny looking chart what's that what are these little boxes and stuff i've never seen those before let's get back to uh open ho low high low close okay Okay. Yeah, it needs a little bit more pullback. Okay, it's had a pretty good run. You know, longer term, it's all over the place, but short to intermediate term, you've got the nice little base, nice little base breakout. It needs a little bit more pullback. Volume could be a little bit better, especially since it's only three bucks a share. But yeah, definitely put that on your on your watch list. Okay. Is the book you're working on the art of stock picking you mentioned during your Proper stock selection course. Yeah, um, the book I'm working on is Trend of Thought, and that comes from thousands of pages of, of handwritten pages that I've worked on for years called the Trend Falling Morons Manifesto. And I realized that that would probably never see the light of day just at the rate I keep adding to it. So what I started doing was I started condensing that down, and I think it's part of this Trend of Thought the 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 lost art of stock selection would would be squished into that too so that's uh, kind of get like two books in one on that but i think the 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 lost art would be the lost art i teach you every week here okay uh and of course there's stock selection course and all and that's basically everything i just said you know make sure you got enough volume make sure it's not too choppy make sure it's trending make sure the pullback's deep enough and so on and so forth USD looked to the left, feeling a little sideways lately. Craig, and his dollar and gold. Surprised you hadn't brought up gold yet. Yeah, it's a little sideways, but so far, looks like the downtrend, the big blue arrow, is pointing down there. Okay. But yeah, dollar, dollar down, dollar down, and that helps to push commodities up because it's going to take more dollars to buy commodities. Another one, NVTS, NVTS. Yeah, this is improving. Um, I see a lot of overhead supply here, though. There's a lot of stocks that are bottoming out that are looking pretty good and bow tying and making these first thrusts and all these other great setups. Okay. But a lot of them have a lot of overhead supply and stuff. But this could this could be a pretty good. I would put this on your momentum list and sit on it a little bit. Maybe if it gets above, let's say, let's say if it gets maybe close to seven and pulls back, you wouldn't have as much overhead supply to get through. What was that? HAI. What did I do with that? HAI. Nope, that's not it. HIOD, okay. Okay, any more any more stock picks you guys want to look at? So let's take a let's go back to the let's shift gears, just go back to that shit coin for a second. H O I D. And let's uh go over there. Nope. Let's go here. H I O D. All right. So remember, I said you could buy them, they just go straight up. Okay. So I bought it here earlier in this presentation, and we're trying to get up here. And that's one issue that I haven't quite figured out is what do you do when the veracity is so much that you could have taken a nice partial profit and, you know how long have i been i've been live i know it probably feels a lot longer than it has been to you guys 
Uh, let's see if we can get this in here. Of course, now it's coming back here and now I'm talking. Yeah, so it's come back in a little quite a bit. But see, up here, that was that was decent profits, not quite 20% I was looking for. So we'll let it run. I was going to close it out at the end of the show, but uh, of course, I'm jinxing it. It's coming back in. All right, anything else going once, going twice? As usual, I want to thank everybody for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered? If you're in Facebook, bring it up there. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll noodle with it. Anything, if you're not a member of Facebook, book which you have to be a, at least a gold member to be in, in the facebook group and we have a bunch of great traders there by the way and i learn a lot i get a lot of setups there all the time i got the i think it was the amli we'll see how that one works out but i got that out the group for sure but uh anything any anything on the answer if you're not a facebook group shoot me an email david dave landry.com everybody have a great weekend and may the trend be with you thank you so much